Would you repeat that this time? If trouble's coming, would you still say buy stocks right now? I would say buy stocks if you get enough for your money. When you're looking at the futures down about 818 points this morning, I think probably the first thing viewers want to hear from you are your thoughts on what's happening with the coronavirus, if this is a reason to panic, and if you are worried about this. Well, I, I, I don't know I have any special thoughts beyond the news on the coronavirus. Uh, the very first day I bought stocks was March 12, 1941, 40, 40, uh, 42. And uh, the stocks were down about 2% that day, as it turned out. Unfortunately, I bought in the morning, so when I came home in the evening and my dad told me the execution price, it was down 2%. But uh, uh, if you're buying a business, uh, and, and that's what stocks are, businesses. In fact, people would be better off if they say, I bought a business today, not a stock today, because that gives you a different perspective on it. Then presumably you can buy a farm, if you buy an apartment house, if you buy a business, you're gonna own it for 10 or 20 or 30 years. And the real question is, is has the 10 year or 20 year outlook for, for American businesses changed in the last 24 hours or 48 hours. And we're gonna, you'll notice many of the businesses we own, partially own, American Express, we've owned it for 20 years, Coca-Cola, we've owned it for 40 years. Uh, those are businesses and uh, you know, buy or sell your business based on on uh, on today's headlines. And uh, if it gives you a chance to buy something that you like and you can buy it even cheaper, then it's your good luck, basically. They're waking up this morning looking at the stock market indicated down by almost 800 points for the Dow. We're actually off our worst levels of the morning, which is something to say when you're still looking at the Dow down by about 786 points. But people have a lot of questions about the economy. They're wondering what's happening right now, particularly with the coronavirus out there. Um, you have a lot of economic data at your fingertips because not only are the many businesses that Berkshire owns, but the businesses you own pieces in. Um, wh what are you seeing right now around the globe? Well, it, it affects various businesses. I'm, uh, 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 I would I would say that I received commentary. I get, I get some commentary monthly, but uh, from from almost all of the companies, and and a good many of them had some comment about how it was affecting them, and however it was affecting them at, at that time, I'm sure it's accentuated. But they've been affected by they were affected by tariffs. They're affected by taxes. They're affected by the most thing is they're affected by competitors and supply and demand over time. And I don't have the faintest idea what our businesses will be doing six months from now or 12 months from now. I do think that not only our businesses, but American business generally will be doing fabulously better 30 years from now or 20 years from now. And the, the long term is very, in my view, is very easy to predict in the general way, but an important way. I don't think there's any way to predict what the stock market will do 10 minutes from now, 10 days from now, or 10 months from now. So I work on what I think I, I'm able to do and as desirable as it might be to know what was going to happen 10 minutes from now, I'm just, that's just not something I'll ever be able to master. So fortunately, I can come to a pretty firm conclusion that 20 or 30 years from now, America business and probably all over the world will be far better than it is now. Charlie Munger, the vice chairman at Berkshire Hathaway, had his daily journal meeting just a couple of weeks ago. And at that meeting, he said that there's a lot of wretched excess out there and that there's a lot of trouble coming as a result. Do you agree with that? There's always trouble coming. Yeah. There was trouble coming in 1942 when I bought that first stock, all kinds of trouble. The Philippines were going to fall pretty soon. I'm never, uh, uh, there's all kinds of trouble in 1949. There was trouble, uh, certainly trouble in 2008 when I wrote an article for the New York Times, I said, trouble is coming, but I said, buy stocks. <laughs> <laughs> would you repeat that this time? If trouble's coming, would you still say buy stocks right now? I would say buy stocks if you get enough for your money. When you look at the economy and how things were kind of chugging along, let's say beginning of this year, yeah. when, when first things things first picked up, how would you gauge the U.S. economy at that well, point? Well, it, it's strong, but a little softer than it was six months ago, but that's over a broad range of business. You look at car loadings, rail car loadings, that, that's moving goods around. And there again, that was affected by the tariffs too because people front-ended, purchased all kinds of things, always a lot of variables. But, uh, but business is down, and, and uh, but it's down from a very good level. Uh, so I would say that looking at our 70 businesses, and that actually, they represent hundreds uh, in addition. Uh, they're a little softer. Uh, on the other hand, I was out with the fellows from the Nebraska Furniture Mart just Saturday night, and, and their business was 
up quite a bit in February, but that's because weather was good. <laughs> so you have a lot of variables that hit. Why, why do you think business was down, let's say, the last six months? Is, is it a decline in confidence or is it coming off of levels where there was unusual activity ahead of that? Well, it isn't really down. It's just it leveled off and a little softer maybe now. But, well, tariffs, the, the tariff situation was a big question mark for all kinds of companies and, and still is to some degree. But that that was front and center for a while. Uh, uh, now coronavirus is front and center. Something else will be front and center six months from now and a year from now and two years from now. Real question is, is where you're, where are these businesses going to be five and 10 and 20 years from now? Some of them will do sensationally. Some of them will disappear. And overall, I think America will do very well. It, it, you know, it has since 1776. But we did have St. Louis Fed President uh, Jim Bullard on the program last week, and he said that he expects to see these low interest rates for a long time to come. That does raise a lot of questions if that happens about what this means for the stock market, what that means for banks, what that means for insurance companies, which you touched on in the letter, too. It's bad for insurance companies, but it's, it's, it's good for stocks. Bad for insurance companies. And what happens to the insurance companies as a result? Are they getting more? Well, there are better some insurance companies have put well, one, out of risk. The ones that really get hurt on it are, are are either life or annuity companies that have promised returns. The property casualty business doesn't promise returns. It still holds money, so it hurts them. But if you promise somebody an annuity, that's going to pay them three or 4%, and now you find that you're reinvesting your money at 1% or something, uh, 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 you know, you're gonna disappear. <laughs> are insurance companies being forced to make riskier and riskier bets? Well, they, they shouldn't be. I mean, the answer, if, if you need to get 3% and you're only getting 1%, the answer is to quit giving 3%. It's not to try and get the one up to three and do more dangerous things. You should always adapt your consumption to your income. You shouldn't try and adjust your income to your consumption. That's a basic principle for individuals, businesses, and everything else. And reaching for yield is really stupid. But it's very human. I mean, and I understand it. Uh, and people say, well, I've saved all this money all my life and now I can only get 1% on it. What do I do? The answer is you learn to live on 1%, unfortunately. To see the Dow down 700, 800 points in the morning, yeah. what's your reaction when you see something like that? Well, my reaction is that I like to buy stocks, so I, uh, I don't wish ill on anybody else, but I like to, if they want to sell them to be cheaper, I, I prefer it. <laughs> so. Uh, if that's a, uh, you know, roughly a 3% decline or thereabouts, I don't know how many 3% declines I've had in my lifetime, but there have been a lot of them. And uh, I I can't think of one that you shouldn't have bought on. You know, basically, that doesn't mean stocks are going to go up or down next week or next month or next year. But but if, if there's something, if you like to own American businesses, you're getting a chance to buy a 3% cheaper. I don't consider that a lot cheaper. I mean, but but... But how can it be bad news unless you have to sell stocks? People start out thinking stocks are cheap and then they start thinking stocks have gone up. And, and, and a stock can be a good buy or a bad buy. A bond can be a good buy or a bad buy. It depends on price. Do you think that there is more risk taking place in the insurance sure. market? Sure, and you see that in, you see that in, 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 in what they call leverage loans and weaker covenants and all. No, people are reaching for yield. There's no question about that. And that's stupid. And it, it has consequences over time, uh, uh, but it's very human. Consequences that could have a big market impact. Depends how far it goes. Yeah, yeah. It's the, it's, it's something that the things that get built in slowly. People going crazy in, in tech companies in the late 1990s. It, it can take a lot longer than you think, but eventually you get to midnight and everything turns to pumpkins and mice.